Kevin's having a bit of a nightmare with his bike here. We could Ooh. be walking into this boffy. Stop it. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's just... He sussed it. It's because it was tangled in the car, tangled in the night. Tangle in the night. That's it. Yes. After a lot of faffing around at the car, it's quarter past 11 and we're finally on the go. So uh, we should get in this boffy, I reckon about back of three maybe. Eight miles to Iron Lodge. I'm glad we brought the bikes by the way, that's a long walk on our track. That's the first three miles done. The tarmac has stopped. We're now in this more sort of rough surface, but it's still pretty easy going, given the little city bikes cruising still. But yeah, so far so good. Let's continue. Five miles under the belt, folks, so that's not too bad. The falls of Glomac are just in that little groove up there. You can deviate up there if you want, but it takes us a bit off the route. So we're going to do the last three miles to Iron Lodge. Have you caught many? Ah, I've got a few. Excellent. Where are you headed for the buffet? Indeed, yes. Good lad. Weather going to be good for you? A bit drizzly, but it should be okay. A bit similar to this. That's good. Your partner's got three already as well, so... Down here? Just along there, she's caught three fish. Aye, she's pretty handy with a rod. Aye. You'll eat tonight? Eh, uh, I've nothing to keep them in, eh, but that, that would have been nice. I would, uh, you haven't got a bag with you now. No, I haven't any that. Uh, Thanks, so. No, probably. I'll leave you to it. Bye. There you go. Ooh. I felt guilty, so I've gave Kev a wee shot of the electric bike for a couple of wee hills. <laughs> but I'm too big for his bike. Oh, steep section. <laughs> Weird. Good though, eh? Yeah. Not far to Iron Lodge now. I reckon about a mile. Maybe a mile and a half. Ooh. Iron Lodge is just there behind the trees. That took one hour and 15 minutes to get here. And bear in mind, we're stopped doing a little bit of filming bit of chatting back there as well, so you could easily scoosh this in an hour. But the wee folding bike does really well. Hiya Robin. Hi. Here he is, just a couple of minutes behind me. Do you want to lock the bikes to that post rather than going down to the lodge? That's the bikes locked up. Now onwards to the boffy. I think tomorrow what we'll do is we'll have a look at Iron Lodge, see if you can still get inside or if it's locked up. I wonder if it's just been left to go into disrepair. Which is a shame, because it's a nice building. So me al Vue Boffy can be a bit of an expedition in bad weather. If these rivers are in spate, it's well guarded by about two, three river crossings, depending on which direction you take it from. So that's number one done. 
next objective is to get up and over this pass. The boffy was about five kilometers away just a few moments ago. So uh, yeah, a bit to go yet. That's took an hour to get to the top of the pass. Get in there. <laughs> get in there. Ooh. Bit of an interesting settlement here. It's marked on the map. Don't know the history behind it. It's got the dry stone dike running up that way. A lonely place to live. So I visited this boffy twice before. The first time was with Kevin Ian about five years ago. We were doing the Corbett's behind me there and we came down, dropped into the boffy for a short break. Yeah, mid -year's excluded. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. Last year was quite good for mid so it was fun that, yeah. Hello. This room's quite snug. Now let's see what's through here. Ah, this is quite nice. Then, three years ago, me and Ian stayed at Melvue Boffey as well, whilst doing the Cape Raft Trail. And I always remember my Inreach Mini stopped working. And uh, of course, I was panicking because I wasn't getting any messages through to my partner, Nicola. Yeah, so, good memories. But the Boffey's had a makeover since I've last been here. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they've done with it. Apparently it's meant to be rather nice. So, we shall see you later on. Bit of a boggy section this. You got wet feet, Kev? Um, oh, the socks doing the job. Funnily enough, just as soon as I had this boggy section... Feel the cold? I feel a little bit. Kev's opted for a lightweight mid-boot. What's it called? The Innovate... Innovate Rock Light. The Innovate Rock Light. G390. And obviously the, the mesh breathable ones, so he's got his waterproof socks on. I'm sure we've crossed this river at least three times now. Nice splashing, Kev. The trust is broken now. That's it. Nah, we've called a truce. And after midnight, it's fair game. <laughs> the super soaker is coming out. Well, here we go, folks. The lonely and windswept Melville Boffy. It's looking good. It's definitely a lucky paint, anyway. I always thought the roof was red, but I'm probably just uh, mistaken. Yeah, as you can see here, folks, this river would be a ball ache in spate. Oh, wow. This is so much better. Fast improvement. 
What's the time, Kev? Wrap o'clock. Right, we've the can of some gear in the boffy. I set up my bed for tonight, and now we're just about to head up this Corbett here, Ben Dronegg. So we're just following the uh, Cape Raft Trail at the moment. Cross the river, and then we'll just start heading straight uphill. Should be a quick one this, and I'll give you a proper tour of the boffy when we get back. We are just approaching the infamous river crossing. I've heard so many horror stories about this one, when it's been in spate. Looking ahead, it looks okay. So yeah, from memory, on the Cape Raft Trail, we head out to that little stony bit and then over there. And I think this is the best place to cross. I'm still getting wet feet, I reckon. We'll see. Oh. So I actually came here, over there, to here, and then there's like stepping stones here, and up onto the bank. I've actually got the fear that the heavens will open when we're on the summit of this Corbett, and by the time we get back it'll be uncrossable. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, I reckon we'll be up here in about, what do you reckon Kev, about an hour? An hour What's about 400 metres ascent? The summit is cloud free at the moment, but it's really strong winds this weekend. I think the gusts are up to 50 miles per hour, hence why we're not wild camping this weekend. My tripod legs came off. That's handy. I can still hold it, as you can see, though. Hey, Kev, here's your one. Black lead, eh? Shut it. I got really close to those two deer there. As the wind is coming down the hill, they just didn't smell me, and it wasn't until I was like five meters away that startled them and whoosh, off they went. I wish I could move that fast on the hill. Less than 40 meters to the summit now. I'm expecting some strong winds at the top, so I've got this little jacket that I bought, it's a windshirt, £35 from Uniqlo. They just opened up a new store in Edinburgh. It's the first in Scotland, I believe. And I tell you what, I love it. I've been wearing it on my dog walks and the way wearing it on the hills just takes the chill off. There it is, folks. The summit trick point. My battery's just about to die, so if I disappear, you'll know why. Yes, typically my battery ran out just as I approached the summit. Anyways, fresh battery and I'm back. Got cracking views over to Lug Vor and Cheesecake. I can't remember the exact pronunciation. It's something like Bidin and Shazgag or something like that. I know true Gaelic speaking Scots hate when people just call it Cheesecake. So, Cal McLean, if you're watching, sorry mate. <laughs> I know he was having a rant on uh, Instagram about it. Uh, Anyways, yeah, I think we should probably head off, get back to the boffy and get some scran. Hey, Kev. Yes, let's get some food. It's just gone six o'clock, folks. We're nearly there. So close. Got the river crossing in about another ten minutes. But yeah, this is uh, fantastically remote. It's like the back and beyond, isn't it? I'm back in the river crossing, but I don't know if you can make out there the bank there. Quite lumpy bumpy, my foot just gave way to a hole and I jarred my back, it's really quite sore, <laughs> honestly. Anyways, so close to the boffy now, get a good stretch here when I get back. It'll be interesting to see if anybody has arrived or will arrive. It's quarter past six, so yeah, plenty of time yet. Oh, and the midges are out here, lovely. Oh, 
Okay folks, so here used to actually be a staircase but what they've done is they've blocked it off they put perspex there and it's letting in natural light from the Velux windows and what they've done is they put a little snug in here and it is literally snug so you've got room for one and room for one more and then you've got a nice cooking platform with a view out to Ulrich Vue, which is getting a little rain shower at the moment. Then we had the room I showed you earlier. So this could probably sleep four, maybe even six. Depends how tall you are, I suppose, but one, two, three, four. Yeah, six at a squeeze, maybe. And the room I haven't showed you is the room we're in tonight. The original main room. So I'm over here, fireplace, and Kev is over there, and you've got the beautiful skylight that they put in, it's really smart that, I do like that, but there you go, now to get dinner on, got the old lights up, just to add some ambiance, and romance Kev. <laughs> Strike pops. Really pushing the boat out for dinner. I've got a mug shot for my starters, chicken and mushroom flavour. And for the main course, I've got a vegetable chipotle chili with rice. And then I've got a Starbar duo for my dessert. Yeah, the man knows how to treat himself. See, I told you I had a red roof. Albeit in 1980 before I was born. <laughs> right, folks, it's 20 to 8. Still just me and Kev. Let's have a little sweepstake. How many people will turn up tonight? I'm going to say two. Many do you reckon will turn up, Kev? Zero. Kev's going for zero. I don't know. I think there's still chances somebody turning up. Particularly we're on the Cape Raft Trail, so we'll see. So I'm going to, Kev's going zero. Place your bets now. Well, that's the Boffy TV on. We've only got two of those fire logs, but it's nice just to get a wee bit of heat and light. Just for the aesthetics. Slange of our folks. Got a little down more in here. Just a couple of nights. Nine o'clock, Kev. I'm going to bed as soon as that fire's out. Are you now? Nah, maybe not. When my whiskey's out. I'm going to have a peppermint and green tea instead of a whiskey. Right, here's the next bet, folks. So we had a wee gamble about how many folk would turn up tonight. That one's not resolved yet. But it is, there's going to be maybe. <laughs> we'll see, there's still time yet, there's still time yet. Anyways, place your bets. Who's going to be up the most for peas tonight? A, me, B, Kev. Place your bets now. It'll be you, like. Do, 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 do. Your bladder's as weak as a weak thing. Yes. Especially if you're in a peppermint tea. <laughs> Would you like some of my green and peppermint tea? Got some whiskey in it. You love that. <laughs> Kev. Night, mate. <laughs> Night, Paul. She, uh... Wake up and smell the buffet. Good morning, folks. It is, uh, what time is it, Kev? Just after six. Hi, pass. Kev had to bail through the room. Apparently, I was making some dodgy snoring noises. Shocking. Probably because I had a couple of wee whiskies and then fell asleep on my back. But I has a good sleep. I'll need to check my, my sleep stats later. Yeah. Uh, we were going to do the Graham, but it's like the mist is right down. So uh, I'll probably just walk out because I'm back to work tomorrow after a week off. There is a current situation, folks. It's looking a bit wet and claggy. So Kevin was right. Absolutely nobody turned up last night. Yes. However, I won 
the other one I only was up once Kevin was up Twice. three times <laughs> that wasn't the I actually he disappeared through the room so he, he could have been just the two anyways kidding. let us know in the comment section how many folk you reckon would turn up and who would win the pee contest <laughs> <laughs> cheers hardly anybody has cleared out the grate for a while it's looking full take your turn leave the boffy better than you found it It's just gone 8 o'clock folks and we left the boffy about 5 minutes ago The plan is, is just to retrace our steps back to the bikes at Iron Lodge and what I'll do when I get there I'll give you the tour if the place is still open that is so I'll bring you back then Right, we're back at the bikes that took exactly Two hours from Boffy to bikes and the tyres are still inflated, that's a good sign. <laughs> right, let's see if this iron lodge is still open or if it's all locked up. Honestly, see as a child, I used to love playing in empty buildings. It's a shame people leave their mess, that's pretty bad. Carry it with you folks. Watch your foot in. Oh, deja vu. Old classic Hoover, anybody? That must go back to the, the 70s or the 80s. Oh, it and up the stairs. I mean, look at that. That's really bad. Come on. A little bit of vandalism here and there. A few windows out. Still looks watertight though. Kev. There you go, folks. Iron Lodge Tour. Well, what I'm going to do, folks, is leave a couple extra Buffy videos you might like to watch here. We're just going to cycle out and I'm going to finish the video. So, thanks for watching this far, and I'll catch you next one. Cheers.